Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, I would like to give you a very warm welcome on today's Euro webinar organized by the European School of Urology. Our today's title is Local Intravesical Treatment of ICBPS, the Present and the Future. I am Bela Köves from Budapest, Hungary, and I will moderate, <coughs> moderate today's uh, webinar. We have two very expert lecturers in the panel, Dr. Dick Janssen from the Nijmegen, the Netherlands, and Dr. Sandor Lovat from Budapest, uh, Hungary. They are both experts in the scientific research area and also in the clinical management area of the pain syndrome. So we have a very good uh, expert panel. In the first lecture, we will focus more on pre-clinical evidence and Dr. Lovat will give a more detailed uh, summary about optimal practical management strategies for patients with BPS. So we can talk both about preclinical and, and uh, clinical aspects. I would like to ask Dr. Lovas to give your uh, presentation about installation therapy. So uh, I would like to speak a little bit more in detail about the local intravesical installation therapy. Uh, as, as first, I, I should uh, declare my conflict as I am a co-founder and the medical director of the Eurosystem Limited. This is a small company which was founded uh, for research and development, marketing of different methods, tools and devices, all for interstitial cystitis. Uh, here, a short summary of Campbell's Walsh urology uh, about the etiopathology. I don't want to go in details. I just would like to show you some important things. Maybe the first point is a bladder insult, whatever the cause can be. This damages the bladder epithelium and a leaky uh, urethelium uh, comes, which on one side, leads to mass cell activation uh, and uh, histamine production with all uh, conducting uh, problems and the progressive bladder injury uh, comes uh, from this which gives a positive feedback to the leaky urethelium and this means this there is a vicious circle if it remains so then the progressive disease comes and, and uh, the progressive worsening of the situation. That's why uh, the main goal of intravesical therapy is to uh, yes. I don't know if you see it well. This is my side. Uh, uh, the main goal is to reduce the chronic chemical irritation of the bladder wall, to reduce or stop the leakage of the mucosa, to reconvert the bacterial inflammation, to substitute the missing compounds of the ganglia, and to stimulate the own production of the ganglia. The questions and the answers can be uh, found under these four points why, what, when, and how to use. The first point is why. The intravesical drug therapy has a lot of challenges. There is just a short duration of action because the patients cannot take for a long time inside the bladder the medication. There is a lack of permeability of the urethelium as we just recently heard. Uh, and there is a lack of bladder uptake of the drugs. But on the other side, there are advantages of the intravesical therapy. High local drug concentration can be reached. Low blood level, therefore there is no systemic side effect. And no efficacy reduction due to metabolism. Intravesical installation therapy in combination with oral medication substitution proved to be one of the most efficacious and maybe the most quick causal treatment form, even over a longer time. 
there's a correlation between the invasivity and the efficiency of the treatment of options. Therefore, the AOA guideline and many other guidelines also recommend to go ahead from the non-invasive or less invasive treatment forms uh, to the more invasive ones. That's quite logical. Basically, theoretical, uh, it can be agreed. The less invasive is, at the same time, the less effective form as well. And the ineffective treatments are the most expensive ones because they cost a lot, they take a lot of time, and wasting time is money, and therefore uh, the ineffective treatment uh, is not the best one. Let's start the treatment with the most efficacious causal treatment, and this is the bladder instillation therapy. What we give? The instilled drug solution, the so-called cocktails, varies a lot among countries. We use these agents uh, as it were already detailed in the previous lecture, DMSO, lidocaine, heparinoids, and the so-called Gaglayer compounds. Just a few words about dimethyl sulfoxid. It has a lot of advantages uh, in urology as a topical analgesic effect, inhibits mast cells, anti-inflammatory uh, effect, relaxes the trusal muscle, and stimulates the nitrooxid release. But the side effect uh, is also uh, expressed very hard garlic breath uh, over two days, and it makes pain, irritation on, on the site of the uh, installation. The lidocaine, just in 2% concentration is effective. Less than 2% has no local effect. It anesthetizes the bladder referent nerves reduces urinary tract pain, uh, but um, enhancing the retention time of the drug solution in the bladder is very uh, uh, advantageous. We use buffered lidocaine uh, for it, uh, based on uh, the publication of Parsons, who proved it is much more effective than uh, the lidocaine alone or uh, versus placebo. It shows three times more uh, patients uh, can be found uh, who observed improvement, the general response assessment for 10 days than in a placebo group. So the effect is not very long lasting, but still it is one of the best sympt symptomatic uh, component of the cocktails. What we give, heparin, plus alkalized uh, lidocaine. This combination proved also to show slightly, uh, in slight improvement, or as uh, the publication says, better uh, on uh, global response assessment. Uh, but, uh, sorry, uh, it is well tolerated for non hanalation type ICs. The local ganglia replenishment uh, uh, causes chondroitin sulfate, as we heard, hyaluronic acid, although it is not directly in the ganglia, but it plays a very important role, as it was detailed previously, heparinoid compounds, and also uh, as local treatment, the pentazone polysulfate uh, is uh, also um, an option. It has no side effects, uh, but the clinical experiences are quite limited with it. Uh, these compounds are mostly used as leather cocktails. Different compounds and combinations are used in different counts, countries. There's a big difference between US and Europe. As we don't know which ganglia compound is really missing, individually in individual cases. Therefore, it is quite logical and the clinical experiences prove that the combination of the components 
gives a much higher response rate than any monotherapy of these. So the intravesical drug installations were evaluated in a very nice publication by Mothersbacher. And although these uh, drug layer compounds are widely used in Europe, they were never approved for use in the USA. There were large trials which failed to show the efficacy of hyaluronic acid, both uh, in small or larger uh, dose. And the chondroitin sulfate also failed in large phase 2B efficacy trial. And the heparin and pentazan polysulfate was never studied in large randomized clinical trials. Therefore, the conclusion is that large scale randomized clinical trials are urgently needed. When to give? The intravesical installation therapy is generally accepted that it is given first weekly, then bi weekly, and then uh, continued by individu individually tailored frequency. Uh, depending on the uh, reaction of the patient. How can we really know what the patient reaction is? Here you see the data input uh, signs. We always ask patients to uh, fix at the beginning, before the beginning of the treatment, all uh, quantitatively measurable parameters. Th this means quality of life questionnaires, pain questionnaire, and uh, urinary diary uh, data. And these are regularly repeated. And based on these regularly repeated data, we can have, we can make uh, uh, such uh, diagrams. Here you see uh, based on our database, um, automatically uh, produced diagrams. Here, for example, an already, already recent score, as it was before the treatment, and it shows optically very clearly that the patient became completely symptom-free over a longer period. Or on the second curve, here you see that after the installation, the uh, mean voided volume, the capacity of the bladder, slowly grows over two years long, till the, the bladder wall uh, inflammation disappears and the patient gets back the original capacity of the bladder. Or here, this is very challenging. At the beginning, we started with local installation therapy at this patient. Start, uh, got some results, but was not enough. Then we repeated the cystoscopy and we could see some sign of hana lesion. Therefore, we made a hydrodistension and a coagulation. And after it, the patient became completely symptom free for a longer time. Naturally, such a uh, visual demonstration of the condition of the patient helps us to define the treatment frequency. The initial treatment is generally uh, weekly. Some authors recommend it for 12-15 weeks, but according to our experience, this means an over-treatment. Our maintenance therapy is a long-lasting, sometimes lifelong treatment, beginning with a six-week installation, and when the patient uh, proves to be in a good stable condition, then we prolong it up to 12 to 14 weeks. So it is individually tailored uh, continuous monitoring. A reasonable reduction of installation frequency based on this continuous monitoring reduces the treatment expenses. Uh, some con considerations. A local intravesical installation is the most effective treatment option. The bladder installation needs to be performed uh, by using a urethral catheterization, as this method is nowadays generally accepted. But 70% of the IC patients 
uh, also have urethral pain and the hypersensitivity in the urethra beside the bladder uh, symptoms. Therefore, many patients refuse the installation therapy, being afraid of the pain caused by the urethral catheterization. Is urethral catheterization really mandatory? This question arises. But we think no. This is not, because there is in the last years available an option, the so-called catheter-free bladder installation, where we use a minimally invasive device, this tiny adapter, syringe adapter, which fits very nice on any lure lock or lure uh, slip syringe. And just the tip, the red, reduced short tip, gets into the orifice of the urethra, and the color, the isolating color, lets uh, fill the liquid slowly through the urethra into the bladder without any mechanical damage of the urethra. Here you see uh, the uh, flexible color in the middle of the picture. On the left, how we use it in female patients, and on the right side, we use it in the similar way, in the same way, the same adapter in male patients as well. In the last years, last five years, we uh, have an experience uh, of uh, more than 3,500 installations. And we can state that there is no need of catheterization for a bladder installation. There is no mechanical lesion of the urethral mucosa. It's completely pain-free, quick, simple procedure in both the genders and the simultaneous treatment of the bladder and the urethral, urethral mucosa is also uh, uh, an option and we can say the only option to treat at the same time the urethra and the bladder. There remain some difficulties of the installation therapy. It is very costly due to the drugs, which are expensive, due to the travel costs, as many patients are traveling from many hundred kilometers to get uh, the treatment. It's time consuming. The patients need to set free maybe the whole day, and time is money. The medical care is also not very expensive, you know. Uh, therefore, over and under treatment is also possible, which all uh, rises the expenses. And the question of how the growing number of diagnosed IC patients uh, and the high costs of long-term maintenance therapy make it inevitable to change the paradigm. Regular self-installation of the bladder is already an advantageous solution for the patients, but the proper identification of the urethral orifice can be difficult, and the handling of the syringe is also a challenge. To solve this, we developed a small assistive device for self-installation of female IC patients. At the same time, at this uh, equipment, we also use the advantage of the uh, adapter, which I showed you previously. Here in the picture, you see the equipment uh, with the adapter and the tiny video camera, which looks at the tip of the adapter. We performed a clinical uh, pilot study with this device in 15 patients. All patients learned to use the device properly. There were no injury, infection, or any other complication. All patients declared to keep on using this device, also further on. And all patients were, would recommend it to use to other patients. Now, uh, uh, we, we went on and now uh, we have uh, around 60 patients who use this device regularly at home. It has a lot of advantages. It can be used by a single hand, and the second hand remains for opening the orifice, as you see it 
on the right upper picture. There is no need of catheterization, so it doesn't cause any mechanical injury. The v, the, there is a very clear visual, visualization of, on, of the orifice from very close uh, view. It's completely pain-free. It can make the, uh, uh, the treatment frequency by, uh, tailored by the individual need and it highly reduces the expenses. On the right hand uh, picture, uh, 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 top picture, you see how it can be taken with one hand, and there you also see the display where the tip of the adapter can be seen, and this helps to direct it into the orifice. The take home message is that a personally optimized cocktail, given in individually tailored frequency and dosage as a self-installation, improves efficacy and of the treatment and minimizes the treatment expenses enormously. Therefore, this method should be considered as the future of ICBPS maintenance therapy. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lovat, for this very interesting and thorough lecture. And also congratulations for this, well, at least uh, interesting idea about self-installation. Uh, I, I mean, of course, uh, in, a, in a pandemic like we have today, it might be a game changer when a patient does, don't have to go to, to seek a, 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 an institute, but, but can but can have treatment at home. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a good idea. And we have very, uh, we have interesting ideas about these, all the practical aspects you mentioned. We have some questions about adding different things and, and your experience to the cocktails. Uh, a few uh, participants asking about adding, what is your experience about adding hydrocortisone in the mix? Or cortisone, uh, do you think? Would be beneficial. Uh, we tried different uh, uh, cocktails and different compounds. We have also experience with uh, steroids. It can be hydrocortisone or methylprednisolone. The methylprednisolone proved to be a little bit uh, more effective, but it was not a clinical trial, so I can just uh, report on my personal experience, although I have to say uh, within the last uh, years I treat regularly over 360 patients, so in the feedback uh, we all have, all these patients have these uh, graphic uh, feedback for us, so uh, it is quite objective to say uh, methylprednisolone is maybe more effective. Yeah, and what is your in your experiment experiment uh, experience about all these combinations? What is the most effective uh, combination or, or cocktail? I also had the same question to Dr. Janssen. What is your experience? I think, I think Dick answered already. Uh, we also always use combination, as I told. Uh, first, we tried hyaluronic acid alone, and then uh, heparin alone, and the monotherapy. Uh, the response rate was low. Uh, now we use uh, combination, always combination of, of uh, hyaluronic acid and uh, chondroitin sulfate, and sometimes we also add heparin to it. Uh, I have to mention that uh, there is a uh, an option if somebody would like to uh, use the our adapter. It cannot be bought as a separate product in Europe, but uh, there is a, pro uh, uh, a compound a solution uh, containing hyaluronic acid plus chondroitin sulfate. And with this uh, solution um, in the box, uh, it is packed together our adapter. So if you, somebody would like to use our adapter, then they can buy it with this uh, solution together. And the results are very good. I have to mention that 
uh, you know, the COVID problem. Patients cannot go to the doctor, they need the installation, etc. All those patients who are using the self-installation at home with this device, they don't feel any disadvantage of the, of the COVID because they can use it at home and they get the pre-filled syringe from the pharmacy uh, 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 delivered per post. So this is maybe in COVID era the optimal.